Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains lost forever. In the void, the shadow realm, if you will. They're gone! And today, we are going to discuss locomotives that were almost so close, this close, just, just an inch, millimeter away from being preserved. And yet, fate decided that no, not allowed. These are five more locomotives that almost survived, but didn't. China Railways RM-1163. With this one, I'm kind of cheating, because according to verified sources, there are still pieces of this locomotive left. But, um, yeah, let's, um, let's discuss this. The RMs are also known as the People Type, that were 462 Pacifics for mainline general purposes, and they were constructed between 1958 and 1966. A total of 258 were produced. China still used a lot of steam power, even late into the 20th century. These locomotives ran for quite a few years, and they were actually quite good. And even when they were eventually withdrawn, a few did wind up being preserved. RM-1001 is preserved at the China Railway Museum. RM-1247 is preserved at the Shenyang Railway Museum. And then there's RM-1163, which is allegedly, apparently, sort of, kind of, possibly, preserved in Japan. But, um, okay, look, these were retired in the 1990s, and it was to be set on static display in Japan, but only the smoke box front, pilot, and one pair of driving wheels are left. The rest of it was cut up in 2006. And, um, yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for that decision, whoever decided to do that. Uh, I, I don't really have any details as to why they made that decision, but yeah. So, I guess I am cheating here, because parts of her are still around for posterity's sake, but it's hard to call her preserved when she's missing most of her. It's like being a doctor coming out from surgery and being like, well, don't worry, we managed to save his life. And you just present the worried family with a zombified arm. Like, yes, okay, I guess technically, but also, no, 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 that's not... That's not how this works. <laughs> British Rail 45015. Oh, a diesel? Huh. Well, hey, diesels need preservation too. We don't gotta be racist about our locomotives around here. And 45015 was a class 45. These were built by Darby and Crew Works between 1960 and 1962 for British Rail, and you may recognize that being a very bad time for diesels in British Rail, but it's okay. The Class 45s, which are sometimes known as Peaks, along with a similar Class 44 and 46s, were actually very good. They worked out well for British Rail's modernization plan. They were one of the successes, and they ran until the 1980s. They were the main traction on the Midland Main Line from 1962. And when they were inevitably withdrawn, the majority were scrapped, but some were preserved. And one of them that was supposed to be preserved was 45015. She wound up being sent to the Battlefield Line Railway, which is a heritage railway in Leicestershire, England, which I'm hopefully pronouncing correctly, though I'm sure someone will correct me. They run from Shackerstone to Shenton on a five mile line. But hey, She's on a heritage railway. Great, she should be fine. No. See, what happened was, apparently the battlefield line just couldn't afford to maintain this particular locomotive, or even keep her under any kind of cover, or even kind of a sheet. She sat in a siding for decades, just chilling, hanging out. And she became so overgrown and downright infested 
with algae and lichen and all sorts of stuff that you don't want inside your locomotive, that by the time they got around to even really looking at her to see if she could be saved, she really couldn't. It just wasn't an option anymore. You're never gonna believe when she was scrapped. It's embarrassing. She was scrapped in 2021, November of that year, right on the Heritage Railway. Not something you wanna see on a Heritage Railway. Generally when a locomotive makes it to a heritage site, scrapping is off the table, but in this case, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of hearsay posts about how the Battlefield line isn't running themselves very well. I don't know how true any of that is. I'm not super familiar with them. And their Wikipedia article is suspiciously scant when it comes to details. So, you know, but yeah, this was, um, this was just a sad situation all around. Unta. Uinta? Yunta. I don't know how to say that. Railway number 50 and 51. These are a pair of locomotives that belong to a railway that I can't pronounce and everyone's gonna correct me and it doesn't matter anymore because the more you comment, the more the algorithm shares this video anyway, so by all means, I might as well mispronounce everything, really. That way you keep making comments about it. Anyway, these locomotives were built by Baldwin to operate on the railway's three-foot narrow-gauge trackage in Utah and Colorado. The line was notorious for very steep grades, but in 50 and 51's case, they performed swimmingly. These were two 662Ts, tank engines, but articulated tank engines, and they were good. So good that when they first bought number 50, they went back to Baldwin for another, and that's how they got 51. They really liked them, and they worked very well for the railway until 1940, when they were sold to the Sumter Valley Railway, who renumbered them 250 and 251. The Sumter Valley would eventually become a heritage railway, though at the time they were not. They converted both 50 and 51 to run on oil, and did I mention they're not just articulates, they're malaise? They're tank engines and they're malaise. They're just, they're very interesting, very unique. I like them, but they worked. But as traffic declined, they had to sell off their unneeded locomotives. And that would wind up including the pair. 250 and 251 were both sold to the same place. The International Railways of Central America of Guatemala in 1947. The Guatemalans still continued to use them until the 1960s, but then announced that they were going to be scrapped. These were unique pieces, and several people and organizations tried to save them, but by the time anything got organized, it was far too late. Both locomotives were cut up. A sad end for two very unique pieces that could run on the current Sumter Valley Heritage Railway right now, but it was not to be. Belgian State Railways, Class 29, 29.279, and Class 44, 44.021. This whole thing might sound weird because these are two completely different kinds of locomotive, but they were both scrapped under the same exact circumstances. So I'm going to tell you this story because it's just disgusting. And I mean that. Despite efforts to save both of these locomotives, they were indeed scrapped in 2002. Yes, really. According to my sources, these locomotives were both housed in the same place, part of a collection that was at the old steam locomotive depot at Louvain. That collection was started by the actions of one man, known as Mr. Rollins. When Belgium was scrapping their steam locomotives in the 60s, he was working as a divisional engineer at Hasselt. He managed to save engines by red carding them in trains to the scrapyard and then hiding them from the officials until the preservation movement got into swing. His actions saved many different locomotives and that was critical because at the time, Belgium officials were actually planning to scrap every single steam engine they had, all of them. The thought of preservation just wasn't considered. And as a result, both of these locomotives managed to survive, but no longer. See, they just sat around for years because Belgium dragged their feet on actually having a proper railroad museum or any kind of museum that would house these kinds of locomotives. And what was happening in the early 2000s was that the depot at Louvain was supposed to be sold for development, 
which in itself was controversial because it had a surviving steam depot with all the facilities, including the wheel drop, wheel lathe, turntable, the whole shebang. But they wanted to get rid of it and make way for progress. And by that, I mean a parking lot. That was, of course, despite the fact that the town council actually wanted to keep the depot and develop it as a railway museum. But no, parking lot. 29.279 was actually built in Montreal, Canada in 1946. She was saved by one Mr. Page, and he wanted to keep her around for a spare boiler for her sister, 29.013, which was kept for special trains. Her boiler was said to be actually in very good condition, though she hadn't been fully restored at this point. 44.021 was built in Belgium in 1906. She was nearly 100 years old. An enthusiast in Belgium tried to save both locomotives, but despite requests from societies and individuals to just, you know, buy them? Belgian railways insisted that they may only be sold for scrap, saying they were in too poor a condition. You know, that wasn't your freaking call. If someone wants to buy them, just sell them. It's not your problem at that point. Don't be jerks about this. But they were. And according to them, selling them would be bad for their image. Mm, mm, mm. Shut up. Apparently the whole fiasco even made national news in Belgium, but the mounting pressure had the opposite effect. One Mr. Gert Mainhout, who was the one responsible for the decision, wound up selling the locomotives to a scrapper for a nominal sum of one euro on the condition that they scrapped them immediately. And they did. Belgian railways would later claim that no one was interested in buying them, which was just an outright fabrication. There were interested parties, and they chose to ignore them. Both locomotives are a sad loss for railway historians. New York Central 1290 and 1291. New York Central Railroad's 1290-1291 were actually a pair of Canadian locomotives. They were known as F-82s, 46010 wheelers, which were built in July and November by the Canada Southern Railway in their own St. Thomas, Ontario shops. They were originally numbered 449 and 454, but four years later, the railroad was actually leased to the Michigan Central Railroad for 99 years. Wow. And they were renumbered to 8152 and 8153 in 1905. Then in 1929, the railroad was subleased to New York Central, where it became their St. Clair subdivision. The two locomotives were principally used on that division. They were renumbered again in 1936 to 880 and 881, and that lasted 12 years before they were renumbered again, one last time, to 1290 and 1291. They were very good locomotives, and they continued running for the rail line into the 1950s, even while many other locomotives were being scrapped and replaced with diesels. They weren't immediately replaced. They ran on the Courtright branch line for the last part of their existence, and by 1955, they were two of the only 44 steam locomotives left running on the New York Central system. You'd think by that point that someone might consider donating them, or selling them to a museum, as they were pretty unique pieces. And 1291 ran until 1956, while 1290 ran until 1957. But they had nearly $5,000 worth of scrap value. And thus, someone just couldn't resist. You know, Barry, it really is nice to see those old 10-wheelers still running around. They might even wind up in a museum at some point. I really have hope for those two. What's a 10-wheeler? You know, I'm not even mad anymore. I don't know what I expected of you. Though at least that's a fair question. I like asking questions. Well, I think they'll make it into a museum as long as we keep them out of the sight of Hello, boys! No! Boys! No! Boys! Yes, boss? I have one question for the both of you. Where are those ten wheelers? Now, boss. They're both very old. Very old. I know! They're so old and they're making us look old. No, I mean, they can go to a museum and be seen for posterity. You know, some people like old things. We need to keep our history alive. Never! They must never know the truth of our history. We never use those dastardly steam engines. Ever. Ever. 
ever! I'm pretty sure we have a lot. Boss, do you know what a ten-wheeler is? Oh, I know what a ten-wheeler is. And I know they're a thing of the past. Now, where are those steam engines, boys? Dunno, haven't seen them. Must have gone to a museum, haha. <laughs> Better get back to your paperwork. What are you talking about? They just went down the line. Barry, I'm gonna scrap you one day. I knew it! They're still running on my track it! No! This is all your fault this time. Well, you won't answer my questions. I won't they And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267 Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsune, 1 and 1 232, Josh Johnson, Metal for Life Guy, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Brian, Jack Carson's Row of Videos, Hayden Negro, Master of None, Lorha 444, The Baxter, The Guy with the Beard, Mark Holding, Lock Kraken, Murder Drone Stall, A Person 723D, DM Travel Typhoon, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Alfonso Lapuche, Royal Hunter 2860, Icer 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matthew Wolf, Dr. Racer 78, Ohio Trucker 1, Mr. Sleepy, Matt Weaver, Alaric Jaspers, Tom Red Lion, and NS Productions 8104. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.